I am super excited to introduce my guest. He's a talented actor and producer. You may know him from his years on Days of Our Lives, Melrose Place, Starship Troopers, just to name a few. He's head of development at Storyboard Media LLC, producing and acting in some really big projects like Marlowe, starring Liam Neeson, Comeback Trail, starring Robert De Niro, Morgan Freeman, and Tommy Lee Jones. He can be seen opposite Bruce Willis in his last film, Deadlock. I want to welcome Patrick Muldoon to the podcast. Welcome to the show, brother. I'm thrilled to be here, brother. Thank you so much for having me. Um, uh, and and uh, we were just discussing our, our mutual friend, George Gallo. George Gallo, you know, yes. Um, so yeah. we don't know each other. We met through George. Um, yep. And I, I, I reached out and I said, can you come on my podcast? And you agreed. So I'm really grateful. Okay. So I wanted you as a guest on my show because I think your story is super inspirational, right? For me, you know, I created this podcast to inspire other artists to follow their dreams. Right. If a kid like me can come out to Hollywood at 18 with 200 bucks in my pocket, a one way ticket, didn't know soul out here and make the dream a reality and being blessed and being a working actor for 40 years, you know, then why can't the listener out there? If a guy like you can, you know, make that dream a reality and you know, you're producing huge projects, huge films, you know, with major A-list actors, you're starring opposite them. You know, the dream is possible. So. I wanted to ask you, you know, like, when did you know you wanted to become an actor? How did it, how did you start in this business? Uh, you know, I grew up, oddly enough, 20 miles south of, uh, of Hollywood in you uh, San Pedro, the okay, cool. Lake waterfront. And that, that seems like, well, that's LA and it's not, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I don't think there's any acting schools in San Pedro. It's a waterfront town kind of run by the union and that yeah. kind of thing. And, and I don't, don't the docs and I, I don't come from an entertainment family and uh, you know, um, you know, I watched, I, I, I was, I have young parents, you know, they were young when, when they had me. So I, I kind of watched my father's journey. He was in uh, LA County beach lifeguard around here, Venice and you know, where you are now, Billy, and all around the South Bay, and he went to law school at night. And so oh. I, I saw, and, and now he's a, a lawyer uh, on the waterfront for, for all these years, but I was young enough to watch him go to law school and, and come back with stacks of, you know, stuff that, you know, you, you gotta love it. And the, the whole idea was it was gonna be Muldoon and Muldoon, but, you know, I watched him go through law school. I watched him go through the, you know, the uh, how much, how much you had to read. And I'm like, you know, I'd rather keep it to 105 pages. I can do that. <laughs> I can't do 105,000 pages. <laughs> so um, I went to USC. I was playing football there. Uh, I'm 18. And um, I, my girlfriend at the time, uh, her name's, uh, Pam Migas, she she lives down here in Torrance uh, at the time, and she's uh, a cousin of John Stamos. Hmm. So I met Loretta, you know, and I got to see John's life from the bleachers, which was not bad, <laughs> you know. And uh, Loretta put me in my first acting class, and I did my first scene. I forget what it was, but when I got done, I was like, well... I'm not going to go to law school. I'm going to do this. You just get the bug. It comes in sure. every cell of your body and you just know, wow, thank, thank you, God. I found what I want to do with the rest of my life. And, you know, with, with acting, it's, if you do it long enough by osmosis, you know, it, it, you know, when you're in movies and stuff like that, you're like, uh, who are we going to cast here? And you, you call somebody or, financing and you, you call somebody and then you start one day just by osmosis you are producing <laughs> you know uh, so much of this you know so much of the business is is people that you come up with and that's why acting classes is so important especially when you're young because uh you you have your ear to the ground on, on what's happening and you're going through a process of learning your craft, you know, uh, and it's a community of, uh, of actors, which is, you know, it's a family. And, uh, 
you compete and uh and you also have support depends but um you know uh from from the acting classes was you know where, where i got word on you know what agent is reading people at the time or, or what what's going on and um you know and i've you know i still i'll take a couple of years off and then i'll i'll go to a new coach because there's no finish line in this game and uh from acting you you get how to develop your character but you're also reading scripts all the time so so uh it educates you for whatever else you want to do whether it's a writer or a producer or some people want to direct i don't i don't know why i i don't have any aspirations <laughs> to ever be that guy <laughs> you know when you sometimes when i'm uh, you know uh, i'm nervous about a scene and i'm in my hotel room or whatever I, I i always wonder what the director is doing it's like a quarterback in football he's got to know you know i can barely memorize what i'm doing on a play and a quarterback's got to know what everybody's doing mm -hmm. so that's that's directing but i don't uh I don't aspire to that, but the producing stuff came, uh, but everything started with, uh, the love of the art, which, which you, 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 you don't get until you get on your feet and start jumping in and succeeding and mostly failing. That's how you learn. And, uh, but you know, great, great teachers, great acting coaches are, you know, they're really, I can I can almost think of chapters in my life based on who I was studying with, you know. That's and, awesome. And yeah, because it teaches you not it's not just your business, but it teaches you, you know, the acting process teaches you about yourself because you have to investigate it to uh to be able to act. So it's uh you know, the blessing of my life was that that first scene where where you kind of get that that thump where you just know this is this is it. And that was at 18? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So before that you had no interest in acting or no. Just okay. So you were playing, you were you were an athlete, you were playing sports. And playing sports and um yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, when you're in high school, I think the idea was, yeah, I was gonna follow my dad's aspirations and become a lawyer on the waterfront. You know? So how did you break it to dad at 18 or whatever and say, Hey dad, I'm not going to law school. I'm going to be an actor. How did he take that? <laughs> you know, luckily because, uh, they also grew up, you know, there as well, small town. So to, uh, when you want to take a big leap that no one else is doing around you, um, that's what he did to become a lawyer, you know? And, yeah. uh, so, I'm lucky that I had great parents that are like, Hey, if that's what you want to do. Go, but go, you know, commit. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so my parents were uh, wonderful in that respect, like, you know, follow your heart. So, so I did. And here you are. So, so 18. So tell me like, how'd you get your sad card? What was your first acting job? Uh, I was, um, uh, it, it started in commercials. Um, well, I started modeling. I was, uh, I was at yeah. USC and, you know, uh, it was, uh, I was in, the, this is embarrassing. I was in the men of USC calendar <laughs> that led to, uh, which it, it led to, uh, you know, modeling, which is not something that you want anybody to know back then, back then it wasn't cool especially when you're still on the football team and it's illegal yeah. <laughs> with NCAA rules. And so, um, but from there, there was a commercial department and uh, I did this commercial called uh, Crunch and Munch, I remember. And I remember the director's face clearly. And I saw him a couple of years later in Venice and he's getting coffee and he goes, uh, he goes, hey, Patrick, we did the Crunch and Munch commercial together. I go, oh, yeah, yeah, you were the director. I go, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. What, what is it? And he goes, Michael Bay, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah. That was amazing. And 
but Michael, Michael was cool. And, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, but, but right after that, it was still at USC. I got an agent somehow, I forget how. And um, I got an audition, you know, and I, I sucked back then, you know, um, yeah, but somehow I, you know, after failing a hundred times uh, already by that time, uh, now we're like 19, 20 years old. Um, I got to play uh, uh, Aliss Alyssa Milano's boyfriend on Who's the Boss. That was it. That you was too? It. You did too? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you yeah. gotta be kidding me. Yeah, I, I turned I turned a guest on Who's the Boss to a uh, three year reoccurring. Oh my God. Yeah, I played Mr. Al. I was a hood with a hairbrush. I was Mrs. Rosini's, you know, uncle. And I came to, I I, I slept over the house. <laughs> you know? Oh my God, Billy. I, I had, I had two, uh, I had two episodes and uh, they had a new boyfriend come in uh, that I was competing with, you know, and, <laughs> and it ended up being Matthew Perry. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. I did a series. So he got with the big arc, not me. <laughs> Me and Matthew did a series, my first television series with me and Matthew Perry. It was a show called Second Chance on Fox. And then they they uh, they canceled Second Chance after like 13 episodes and they revamped it and they became Boys Will Be Boys. And it was just me and Matthew Perry oh um, my God. So starting the was, Fox Network. I mean, I, I don't, you know, the, he was uh, he wasn't Matthew Perry as we know him. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, between scenes, the guy was just making me laugh yeah, just talking, talking mad shit like to the director in a you know in a in a comedic way but <laughs> my god you could see the talent back then yeah well yeah. i i knew him i knew him when he, when he was just first starting out so yeah oh uh, right on yeah, that's yeah. funny so we have George George oh, Galloway. Oh, we have so many connections. I mean, we, being in this biz, business for so many years i mean i got you know i came out in 1984 four you know right so i've been on. in this game you know i got my sad card in 1985 so i've been in this game a long time and i've been blessed you know so we i know there's a lot of people i was looking down your your imdb which you got a shitload of imdb credits um but i was like oh yeah you know there is a connection he's gonna we have so many connections we, we know so many i mean i guarantee you we have a lot of people that we know tons yeah <laughs> We start with those guys. My God, man. But yeah. the fact that you were on who's, we were both on Who's the Boss. And uh, uh, how is Tony? Tony's great. Tony was a guest yeah. on my podcast. Oh, he's he's great, man. Yeah, you Tony. Know? I love and Tony. Is, talk about a story. That yeah. guy, you know, being an actual, uh, like, for real boxer. Yeah. You know, and I yeah. hear all these stories about Tony, like, through the years. Like, very, very tough guy <laughs> yeah tony but, tony was a great fighter uh yeah. you know the funny thing is is you know i tell you a funny story is when i was back in brooklyn and i was dreaming of becoming an actor i mean i knew i wanted to be an actor when i was 11 years old they filmed the movie in my neighborhood uh and and i got a little part and i, I was like a background in the film and but when, when i showed up to the set there was a little kid in the film that was a, a lead in the film but he wasn't there the day i showed up so everybody thought I was him. So they gave me the star treatment. They gave me the chair. They powdered my nose. I got craft services. And, <laughs> and I played along. And I got bit by the acting bug at 11. A year later, wow. they were filming Saturday Night Fever in my neighborhood. And I went down and I watched John Travolta film till like 4 o'clock in the morning. Come on, man. In the you saw Saturday Night Fever getting filmed. I was there. I was a little boy. I watched till the wee hours of the morning in the Barracuda Club when they fight and the car comes peeling out and the stuntman comes rolling on the street. And I was there like, you know, wow, this is what I want to do. That'll you know? give you the bug. Yeah, I got it. John Travolta's autograph and the girl screaming. It was madness. He amazed thousands of girls out there. And I was like, that's what I want to do. <laughs> wow, man. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. That'll do it. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny. Is, is I was before I came out to uh, Hollywood, I was I would watch Who's the Boss when it yeah. first came out in 1984. And, and you know, I used to watch. Huge. It was like I, a yeah. sitcom then. I yeah. used to watch Taxi for years. I love Taxi with Tony Danza, you know, when he played Tony Banta, you know, so. So here I come now, I'm in Hollywood and I audition for, you know, who's the boss and I get it and it becomes, you know, I spent three years on the show and, um, 
I, I did, was telling him on the podcast, I, you know, I, I was very inspired by Rocky when I saw Rocky, you know, the first Rocky, you know, I was, I oh, was yeah. you know, so I, you know, I started working out and started, you know, but here I am, I come to Hollywood, I get the TV series, we're doing Who's the Boss, and uh, we're going to play golf at Whitsit every Wednesday after our table read, and, and, and here's me and Tony Danza. And who shows up is Sylvester Stallone. So he becomes, it becomes. Get a, out of here, man. So here I am on the putting. You manifested that. I'm on the friggin' putting green. And there's Tony Danza, Tony Banta to my left. And there's Rocky. And I'm going, holy shit. How did I make this shit happen? You made it happen. You manifested it. Yeah, you did. I did. Because yeah. I believe that I can do it. And that's, uh, that's a key is really being able to visualize it and see yourself doing it there. I mean, I can tell you, I, I'll tell you a quick story. When I, when I was, before I came out to Hollywood, I used to watch a TV series called The Fall Guy with Lee Majors, right? You know, The Six yeah. Million Dollar Man. I grew up watching The Six Heather, Million Dollar Man. Heather, uh, Heather Thomas, Thomas, right? Thomas, so, yeah. so I'm literally watching this TV like this going, I'm going to do that. When I get to Hollywood, my first audition, when I got an agent, was for The Fall Guy. And it was a guest starring role, and the character's name was Billy. No way. I went in, I auditioned, I, I got the part, I got my SAG card on my first audition. It's like I climbed into my television set. Here I am with Lee Majors and Heather Thomas. And I'm on, is that, you know, that's how the power of visualization and believing and saying and putting out there, I'm going to do that. And then going after with a vengeance. I mean, I, I you know, I, I like, you know, if you want to take the island, burn the boat. You know, I came out with a one-way ticket. There was no boat back. Yeah. failure was not an option. You know, I had to, I had to get all those no's. When I would look for an agent, I banged on every door in Hollywood and they said, no, 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 no. I went through a list, A's, B's, C's. And at Y, I finally found an agent and that got me that first audition and I got my SAG card and the rest is history. You know, it's about, like you said, it's, it's like you said, you know, you, you had to get, you know, you had to fail and fail and fail and fail. And then boom, you hit, and you yeah. landed something, you know? So I, I think I love no's. I, I believe every no brings you closer to a yes. Go get some friggin' no's man in this business. Yeah. No, you have to jump and it's, uh, you know, people say it's, 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 it's tough skin, but, but it's really the ability to jump and still keep your heart open because, you know, so a lot of people that that I came up with, the ones that fell away, uh, got bitter. Mm -hmm. Once it fell away, uh, well, it's a system, and they blame the, the you know other people, and you know. It's, it's, but but if you, yeah, if you have a if you fail, first of all, you know you don't know why you don't get a job. Uh, it it could be, and I can tell you this from being a movie producer. You know, a lot of those jobs <laughs> are cast before it ever gets to a casting director. Sure. So, uh, you know, it's it, yeah, you have to have tough skin, but you have to. But like you, you just said, every every L, if you, if you if it makes you better and you you embrace it, you know, that's your and it gives you more drive. You know? Sure. How did you deal with like you know early on rejection? As an actor, like anybody else, like I, I hated getting rejected, you know, uh, you know, in us as actors, you know, we're probably not the most stable, emotional people mm -hmm. uh, in inherently. And, uh, you know, and, and so, you know, sometimes it, it's you have your you really have to watch your negative interject, you know, sure. telling you that uh, you you know, you're a piece of shit and all that, but, but, but the commitment, the commitment to keep getting off the ground and jumping, whether it's acting class or, or an audition or whatever, there's just, there's no, I'm, I'm not doing this or there's no, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. It's no matter what you get your ass up and, and go on, on to the next one, you know, yeah. and, uh, and, and it makes you, it gives you resolve. You know, it makes you a stronger person and, and you learn because, you know, my God, like, uh, you know, and the balance when you're a young actor, at least this was me, some, because I come from sports. So with sports, it's if you need to get better or you need to lift more weights, there's more effort. So there's a way to, I had to learn more effort 
doesn't necessarily mean um, better. You know, there's there's a there's there's a smarter way to work in the arts because you're dealing with you're not dealing with lifting weights, right? No. You're dealing with something that that's kind of unknowable. It's it's you showing up in a part and a lot of stuff in your subconscious that attaches to story. You know, some things move you and some things some things don't. But you know, there, there was a part. Uh, you know, there was a definite as in definitely as a early actor where I tried too hard and I was mm. tight. And I go into auditions and I was tight because I was trying to do, I was trying to understand a process called acting that I didn't know yet, you know, and you don't realize that it's really not that kind of beast. It's like molding, you know, like when you're getting into a part, there's, you know, there's, there's all kinds of things that are happening spiritually, <laughs> you know, physically that that get you in the right place to be successful at something not just more effort like if i fail it's, it's more you know it, 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 sometimes you can get tight that way so it's kind of a balance and you really need a good teacher to to say hey this is you know it's, it's not promised to anyone but you have to keep an open heart i had a uh, one of my mentors through the years was Larry Moss. You you know Larry? Yeah, sure. And, uh, and what did he say? You have to have the ass of a rhino and the heart of a rose. So there's a balance with keeping yourself sure. open and keeping yourself tough that you're going to keep going. Yeah. And that's the key. Keep going. You know, don't quit. Yeah. You yeah. know, stay out of your head, you know, and, and, and your head. I, would, I would get so much of my... Yeah. I, my fucking head. I, I think the key is is yeah. is is having fun, man. You know, ha being in play. Like if if, if you came in just to play, man, I'm here to play. I'm an actor. I'm uh, I'm playing a character. I'm having when fun. You're, playing, made, you're present. Yeah, you know exactly. You're, you're not trying to do some mental construct. Yeah. And do what you figured out in the dressing room, you know, or in your car. You have to be in. And I think a big big thing uh like when you watch brando you know streetcar named desire yeah. why are you know you have vivian lay you have all these amazing actors why why does your eye go to brando because he's in the place he's sure yeah you know, when she remember yeah. the scene where she drops the glove and he and he puts it on that's waterfront puts... Oh yeah, well, waterfront. Yeah, I mean, yeah. remember that? And Same he puts the glove thing, on. Yeah. It's in the moment. He just picked up a glove that fell yeah. down, and he put it on, and he was playing with it, and it was magic. Street car named Desire. He's, yeah. he's talking to his uh, to Blanche, and there's a feather that comes from one of the tiaras, and there's a feather that drops. He goes like this. He's there. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so anyway, that's what I mean. Like you know, being being place is is such a big thing. Uh, on the physical side of acting, just allow you relax. Relaxation is so important. And uh, that's what I mean. Like sometimes you can get in your head and try so much that you're not there or, or you're trying to get the job so much that you're not present or you're trying to be good. So, so much or trying to impress people instead of just being like, screw everybody. I'm, I'm here. I'm in the moment, you know? And, yep. and even that thought takes you out of the moment. You just have to be there. Like we're here. I don't know what the yeah. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Yeah. But you know, it's about listening. It's about reacting. It's about being in the moment. Yeah. You know, really yeah. just listening. Yeah. And yeah. And it's it's it, and as you go, you get tools in in, in your toolbox. Because some days you're you, you know, you can't be in the place because of your mental state away. There's you know, so many tools that you that you uh that that you get along the way, but it's there's still so many tools that I wish I had. There's tools out there that I don't know I need yet, you know, and that's the wonderful thing about any art, you know, musician, painter, whatever. Uh, there's no finish line and and you spend your whole life. That's a beauty. Yeah. Trying to grasp the gold ring, but you never grasp it. You know? Yeah. Anybody who says, oh, I know everything there is about acting. They're full of shit because, there's you know, no shit. I mean, listen, I learned every I've been I've been teaching for like 10 years now and and I learned something new every day. Yeah. 
you know, I mean, that's the beauty. Of, I love what I do. You know, I, I really found my true calling is, is, is being the guy, you know, I've been there, done that. I got the t-shirt to friggin' prove it. You know, I, I know like how to work. I know actors are very sensitive and, and how to really work with actors. But when I work with them, I learn so much, you know, I mean, okay. what, it's, a, what, it's, a, what a joy that must be, it I mean, is. you know, Truly I never is. taught acting, but I, I would imagine for your own personal acting yeah. must oh, be yeah. a treasure. Yeah, I mean, you know, talk, talk about like 10,000 hours outliers, you know, as a, as a young actor, like, you know, I'd act when I had an audition or an acting class, but now I'm acting every day, you know, so my, yeah, yeah. Craft, yeah. my craft, you know, I'm asking all the questions, you know, all day long. And and it really it, it it's developing me as an actor. I mean, I can't wait. I mean, to jump back in front of the camera because I know I'm going to be so much better of an actor because you know, I've been working the craft for 10 years straight. Yeah. You know, on a yeah. daily basis, you know, and that's what I tell my actors all the time. It's really just, you know, doing the work and and and, and the preparation and really, you know, having fun with it. You know, I think the key is, you know, for guys like us that have been in the game for a long time is really, and I, and I know a lot of great actors that have a shitload of IMDb credits, but they lost the passion for it. They were like, oh shit, I got another audition. Ah, boo. You know, it was like, there was no longer fun. There was a desperation. I need to get this part because I need to get my insurance. Or, you know, if you're coming into an audition scenario like that, it's a, it's a bad place to come in from because it's, it's that energy that, I mean, a casting director produced you can smell that shit a mile away the desperation the yeah the, you know but if you're coming in i made some big ass choices i know this character better than the writer who wrote it because i wrote the backstory i got the wardrobe on my, i'm pl putting myself in a real place i'm talking i'm substitute personalizing i'm loading it up with my soul i'm leaving a piece of my soul behind then it's not about getting the part it's about leaving a piece of you in that room and they will take notice of who you are as an artist because you're not playing it safe you're not just saying the words on the page you're you're bringing your soul to it and you're you're having Amen. fun, you Amen. know, and, and play. Yeah, really about play. Just stay in play. Yeah, no, so, it, it, you know, you you see little kids. I have a, a, a seven year old nephew, and I see him play with his friends, and their bodies are relaxed. Mm -hmm. There's no, am I believing this or not? They're they're there, and everybody has that example. But but watch kids. It, there's mm -hmm. no, sure. no this. It's it's everything. It's this. It's emotional. It's physical. And and we, the older you get, the smarter, the more intelligent you get. You know, uh, the more you could be removed from that sense of play. You know. So yeah, you you know, there's but there's but technique and and also the the tech the technique you have to prepare makes way for showing up and like we're talking about being present. And, sure. and, and being available for anything, you know? Well, I, I think that's the way to deal with nerves. You know, a lot of actors, you know, and I deal with them, you know, how do you deal with nerves? Well, I say it's being so prepared, knowing the material backward and forward, forward and backward. So you don't, you're not worried about lines. You're not like, what's my next line? You just can be in the moment and play. And then it made some big choices and loaded up where you're coming up previous circumstances. and done know where you're going, have a secret, have a sense where you can just, the more choices, you know, talent lies within your choices. The more choices you have, the more fun you're going to have because you're playing. You're not like thinking, oh, what's my next line? You're, you know, in the moment and you're, you know, you know what you're doing in the, in the scene, you know? And what you just said is everything, which is it's your preparation. Mm -hmm. That's really where the work is, you know? Yeah. And, and we all have those moments that we, we could remember where God shoves his hand up your ass and you're flying and you don't even know what's happening. But Imagine that's few and far between, Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, once you feel between. it, once you get a little taste of that, then yeah, you're like when a. When you get that, you're like, oh. Yeah, you're like a junkie needing a fix to get yeah. back to that magical moment where you just lost and you don't even know what happened and it's magic time and like stuff happens. And you can't, you know, you can only prepare and hope that happens. But if it no. doesn't happen, then you have the the back the the backup of your technique. 
Yeah. Let me ask you a question. You, how did you, you know, you had a lot of success. I mean, you were, you know, early on you landed, I mean, I think I saw 498 episodes of Days of Our Lives or something like that. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, well, let's talk about that for a second, like working on a soap. I mean, what, what was that like for you? Um, you know, the fame that you, you, you had a lot of, you were on a lot of big projects like Melrose Place. I mean, Melrose Place was the biggest show when it came out or or Starship Troopers, you know, which was a big movie. You know, so you were on some high profile projects. How did you deal with that fame or being, you know, you know, all of a sudden you can't, you know, go anywhere because people recognize you? Uh, to me, it was always work. So I'm at work. So. And of course you want, you, hey, you know, you get into this, you you know, like I, I saw John Stamos with 5,000 girls. I'm like, that looks like a great <laughs> job. <laughs> but but that's, once you start to get into a, a, a great class and then really you're thirsting for chasing this art and, and, and chasing those moments that we just talked about. Um, so, I was, you know, especially on a uh, on a soap opera, it was being also fear. Like fear is your friend. You can't, you know, you get one take on those things. Mm. You know? Back then, we we back then it's different than now. Back then, I think we had a dress rehearsal, if I remember, and then we would come back and and bang it out for for hours. Now now those people, like my hat goes off to them. I, you know. Uh, friends of mine that that are still on the show when when I was there, like mm. uh, Ali Sweeney, like uh, on Days of Our Lives, uh, who's, who's amazing. And it's it's one take, like you show up, you get your makeup on, and you know. But it but in answer to your question, um, all those things about about being famous or you know all those things, that's all present. That's all frosting. But but you get into uh, the fear of failure, you know, mm -hmm. can be a motivator and and inspiration in your work. I'm coming to play. I'm coming. And, and that's kind of what the soap opera taught me as, as kind of the first thing out, which is no one. If people have been on that show for 30 years, when I walk on that set, it's like walking into a boxing ring. Mm -hmm. I'm more prepared than you. Love that. You know, and and when I walk on, I deserve to be there because I'm I'm really prepared. Like there's no phoning it in with me ever, you know. So Love that. yeah. So, you know, whether it's and and that's just, I that's that's uh competition, but it's also because I love what I'm doing. Yeah. Why wouldn't you show up? Uh it's true. With with strong choices, why wouldn't you show up? You know, with the, in, and explore and and make, because you it's easy to do that when you love what you're doing, and it's easy to do that when you're chasing the dragon of can I get better? You know, uh, or you know, and one of the great things is is always getting inspired. Go to the movies, you see somebody who's just throws out some miraculous performance. You know, this way beyond me, hmm. but but it's the beginning of what did they do? How can I do that? You yeah. know, and the answer is uh, explore and and work your ass off. You know, but but Amen. back then it was it was I was terrified of getting fired. <laughs> number <laughs> one, because everybody gets fired off soap operas, yeah. right? So the whole time I didn't have much time to be like, oh, you know. I'm I'm getting recognized in the streets. It was more trying not to get fired. That was oh, people left all the time. So I was terrified. Yeah. I, I, I gotta fucking admit, but I was I was fucking terrified of getting fired the whole I, way through. Yeah, I got a funny story. So so uh I just did a three month run on General Hospital recently. Like, you know, I've been I've been teaching for 10 years, you know, and I told my agent, I don't have time, don't no auditions. I have no time for that. You know, I, I I'm out, you know, but he calls me up and he says, hey, there's a thing on General Hospital. They want you to, they, you know, I did the show 20 years ago. So, you yeah. know, I have a character. So they said, you know, they want me to come audition. I was like, I, I can't do it. You know, I, I literally yeah. said no. But 
But, you know, now with self-tapes, they say, well, can you put yourself on tape? I said, sure. You know, I have a studio. I got cameras. I said, yeah, I'll put myself on tape. And I literally put myself on tape. I threw it out there and I got the part, right? So so now I haven't been in front of camera for a while. So I show up to General Hospital and this is, you know, COVID mask, you know, every they got the COVID protocol. So, you know, back in the day when I did it 20 years ago, we had a rehearsal, you know, we kind of, you know, the so actors. You had the same yeah, experience. Yeah, so it was, it was fine. It was yeah. a really pleasurable experience, right? You work with the other actor and then we get up there, we block it a little bit, you know. The theater. Now, yeah. Now, now, now I'm in my little jail cell of a, you know, dressing room. Yeah. Uh, you got to wear the mask, you know, so I'm not interacting with the other actors that have been on the show for many, many years. There is no, you know, it's very, it's all like, okay, Billy Gallows show up to stage three and I show up there. And it's a blocking, pull off your mask, you get one take. So, yeah. and and the stage manager says to me on my first day, he says, I hope you know your lines, because if you don't know them, you're going to get fired. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it was how, how wonderful. No of, pressure, of, you know. no pressure. Yeah, so yeah. now no I'm pressure. back, now I'm backstage waiting for my cue, remembering what that stage manager just said. And now yeah, I'm getting that's a little, terrible. It's terrible. I'm getting a little <laughs> adrenaline rush. My heart is pounding. I'm getting in my head a little bit. I'm like, you know, yeah. I'm like, wait a second, what's going on here, Billy? Why are you getting this way? You know, and I had to really. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because when you get 30 pages the, the day before uh, and you stay up all night and you haven't slept and it's like overhead lighting, you look like shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about myself. And uh, and, uh, you know, there there isn't that much time to prepare. And uh, the the last thing you ever want to do is, you know, they say action and you're thinking about words, you know, uh, that's easy when when you have one script to take care of and you have a, you know, even if it's TV movie, you at least have a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. This is the night before or, or the and, day and, of they give you or, new pages. Oh, here's the new pages. <laughs> I, I don't you know, and, and back in the day, like you had the same experience as I did. 20 years ago, I mean, it was 30 years ago, but it was, we had dress rehearsal mm -hmm. and it was a theater company and, and we're all working together. This is, I went back for a year, like 10 years ago. And uh, I didn't, I didn't get, I mean, I, I, I thought I would just jump back in and it's an old muscle, but it's sure it's an old muscle from 90s soap operas. This is a new thing. Yeah. Show up, you know, stand on your mark and go and and you know sorry like for me uh it was there was not very much acting i was like please god let me remember what the fuck <laughs> i'm supposed to say yeah. i know when i know when you know whoever is getting to the end of their speech i'm like what the fuck am i supposed to say <laughs> you know because there's no time and yeah. and uh you know and and there was like I had such a rough time with that, not being able to prepare yeah. uh, that it, it screwed with my sleep and it was not the best yeah. experience. It's a great training ground for actors. And I got, I got, have a lot of respect for these yeah. actors. You know, I was, I had more. It was great. Yeah. Great. I just had Maurice Bernard on my podcast. He played Sonny on general hospital for the past yeah. 30 years. And, you know, yeah. I got like utmost respect for these guys because, you know, they, it's like day in and day out, they have to, you know. I don't know how they do it. I, I have mad, super mm. mad respect yeah. as well. Like mad respect. And and you see these guys who have been there for years and it's like, but they're, they're, they're there and it's, you know, they're, they're in that state that we're talking about being present and being able to play, you know, but there's nothing like being out there thinking about what what your line is because you just got it yeah. you know, from, you how know, do you how do you deal with uh with fear with nerves i feel it and uh sometimes uh, you know i i mean at the end of the, I, i'm competing with myself and i'm competing with other actors you know uh i'm but i'm a, i'm a huge uh boxing fan um sorry okay you okay sorry yeah. sorry baby okay um 
you know, we get inspiration from other actors, but we also get inspiration from, from athletes. I always think because I boxed for years as well, but I, I always think about like, uh, that kind of fear publicly walking out, getting in that ring by yourself, especially these, these, uh, you know, the, the, the pros, the Terrence Crawfords and Errol Spences and, you know, these guys that are, there's so much pressure, you know? Um, and like Mike Tyson talks about, uh, custom auto used to tell him fear is your friend, you know, and Mike Tyson's become like this spiritual, like savant. Have you seen his like, yeah, a, no, it's amazing. you know, like, a, you know, the, the most deadly man feared man in the world was so terrified before his fights that he would cry, you know, but custom auto, you have great teachers. That's, I think that you have great mentors. You know, I've, I've certainly been blessed with them where, Fear, number one, tells you that you care, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, and that you're, you're, you're involved. It tells you that you're, you know, it's, it's energy. Mm -hmm. And there, there's a switch from fear to confidence. It, and it comes from preparation, it comes from work and it comes from, uh, loving what you do and it's and it's uh but but fear is there it's you know a lot of sometimes it's not you know sometimes sometimes it's chill you're in your body you're not thinking about anything someone says action and 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 you see what happens which is the best right and then sometimes fear is uh there's always fear like when i get a job and you hear i'm sure billy is the same with same with you like sometimes you get a gig and you go, can I do this? Mm. And uh, and you think back on how many times that's happened in your life. And uh, in retrospect, you're like, wow, I, I showed up every time. Sometimes I was better. Sometimes I was not as good, but whatever. You, you show up and you get through it. But I deal with fear as energy. And uh, uh, it's just flipping it within yeah. your psyche and you, you have to you know it's it's uh not to get metaphysical but we all come in and i think there's there's wild horses in front of the carriage and when you're younger they're all going in different directions right especially if you're an artist and you're you're screwed up enough in your mind that you want to become an actor <laughs> <laughs> right you're you're so damaged <laughs> that the the imaginary circumstance makes more sense to you than your own life. Mm -hmm. Like things make sense there. You know, they don't really make sense over here, but I'm taking all this shit and I'm I'm filing it in there. But you know, it's it's uh it's so with that horse metaphor, as you get older, you're trying to get all those wild horses to go in the same direction, not not 50 di directions. And part of that is learning to deal with fear and learning that fear is your friend love that yeah love yeah that. transforming it you know take that fear go to work and Look, it, it'll, it'll become power it'll yeah, become it's either, confidence it's either fear or faith you know and if you have faith and you go listen i know i've been here before i you know i didn't die last time I'm not yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, time, right right you know? yeah you know i mean yeah. listen that's you know i i tell my actors i love the the uh the boxing analogy is for me, I tell my actors, that's what an audition is. I said, that's, I want you to think of it like a boxer. When you're in that lobby, right? Before self tapes, right? Yeah. You want to be in the little corner by yourself. You don't want to be chit chatting with the other actors. You don't want to get into the lobby game and start talking. You want to be in the corner, breathing, grounding yourself, getting ready for the bell to ring. When yeah. the bell rings and that casting says, it says, Billy, we're ready for you. Your only job is to walk in that room and knock somebody the fuck out. Yeah, right? and guess what? The the first thing you do is relax. Yeah. You know, and it, like Teddy Atlas, I saw, saw some interview with him like a couple months ago talking about fear is, fear is your friend because he was custom auto as well. But he goes, most people, when you're sitting, let's say you're the headliner in a fight and there's five fights before you. Because most people sitting in that dressing room, listening to the fight, there's one fight down. Now there's only four fights. That 
that just sitting there before you ever get to the ring in the ring, you know what to do, but that'll, that'll destroy most men, just that kind of, so it's, it's, it's really, uh, it's really learning that it's always going to be there. Yep. You know, it's always, if it's not there, I think you're in trouble. Yeah. So uh, getting there and learning to nap, learning the horse, like learning to ride it, it's, it's going to be there. And it's in a way that's exciting. The fact yep. it's not exciting once, once, you know, you jump into the scene, it, it fears part of excitement. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, sure. That excitement is like batteries for an actor. I think you need it. Yeah. You want that. You want to just be able to channel it into the work and 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 play with it. Yeah. There's crippling terror. That's not what I'm talking about. But no. healthy fear is great. No. Now let me ask you, how'd you make the transition from, you know, being a successful actor and you're still working? I mean, you, you just did a film opposite Bruce Willis. You're in Comeback Trail with, you know, Robert De Niro, Tommy Lee Jones and Morgan Freeman amongst the amazing cast, you know. You, 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 what was the other film you did? The Liam Neeson uh, Liam Neeson one with uh, so, Neil Jordan. Which yeah, was, but yeah. you know what? What? What I find awesome is that you're a producer on these projects, man. You made these projects come to fruition. So tell me how you made that, you know, pivot into you know producing films. Uh, you know, uh, it kind of it kind of happened by osmosis, like. You know, I started to do more and more gigs. I'm like, why is that guy the producer? And I would ask, why is that guy the producer? What does a producer do? You know, I mean, I've learned now it's much more involved than what I was told. It's like, well, he knew the writer and one of his buddies knew the money. And, uh, you know, and and you had some actor friends, maybe he knew the lead or, you know, whatever, or had, you know, and I, you know, I, I would sit there, you know, being from L.A. going, I know those guys like that's I've been up in the club with those guys or gals, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, uh, growing up here. That's that's producing. And then you realize that that that's that is part of it, you know, where you start to put legs at the table and the table is the film, you know. You start maybe you only start with one leg of the table, which is a script, you know, a great, great script. And then and then uh, maybe a financing piece, uh, you know, so you. Uh, you start and especially with the smaller independent movies where everybody's pulling in resources, you know, little independent movies are, are wonderful because it is like like the experience of acting class. Everybody's there. This thing may not exist. This may not, you may work on this for two, three years and it just dissipates and goes nowhere. But everybody's pulling in uh, their resources. You know, I know who could play that part. I know, you know, I might know somebody who's wants to put in some money right here and, and you get a group of people and you're kind of in a boat together and, uh, you're creating from the other side of the desk, you know, the, and the, the fact that you can act in those things is, is a bonus, but there's a, there's a, a creativity to producing as well. It, it isn't, but it is really not the joy of acting at all. Uh, like I'm sure, you know, it's, you know, if, if you could go out and producing and have as a producer and have the same six people in the boat or the same 10 people in the boat every time out that you trust, that'd be yeah. wonderful. But if you, you know, you're pulling in people, you know, <laughs> to go <laughs> bring, excuse me, bring this story to life, uh, you know, in six months down the road, you feel you, you learn that somebody is, is not, uh, there to bring a story to life because that's all we're ever doing mm -hmm. right whether you're a producer or a director or an actor all anybody's doing is bringing a story to life you know uh so there's the business side of producing but you're you're asking me how i got into it i kind of realized that i was already producing on some of the small independent projects because everybody is pulling cast pulling funds, doing everything they can to make this, to give this thing life. You're kind of like a midwife 
uh, on on the smaller projects. And so you're you're that's producing. And 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 I was doing that, and I realized, oh my God, you know, I'm. It's not like I'm going to be a producer just by the need of what you know, a group of people, uh, you know, we're trying to do, and I, that I happen to be a part of uh, the need of what that script to bring it to life is producing. So it happened by osmosis. And, uh, you know, and then, then you go and, um, you know, it, it, you, it's the same thing. You have to keep going until you find fits because you're you're on the phone or together in you know as a producer with people all day, all night. You know, you know, it's hard to even have a relationship because it's there is no nine to five. It's whenever that phone rings, you have to be available. Uh, so it's you know, it's not a. I, I don't know. I don't know how people are producers uh, that have families or children. I don't know. I don't have those things. <laughs> I don't have those problems like you, Billy. So <laughs> that's tough. I, mean, problems. I just met your beautiful wife, yeah. but do you have kids. I do. I have a 16 year old son. Amazing son. Yeah. Get down. Get down, man. Right on. Congrats. Actor. Yeah, listen, I I, no, no, he's an athlete. He, he, uh, you know, I, I know he has it in him, but he's like, nah, I don't want to do that. So one day, I'll, it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> come yeah. around. But you know, I listen. I produced a film, and 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 it was probably one of the toughest things I had ever done in my life. You know, I produced a film in New York City, and and it was it was just you know dealing with IATSE and Teamsters and everybody else and actors and especially, especially out there. Yeah, it's, it was it, it was you know, but but yeah, it was I literally finished the film and had 17 knives in my back and I was bleeding out. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I raised two and a half million dollars to do this independent film halfway you through, you know, the, yeah. the, 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 we lost, I was getting financing from wall street. The market took a dump. I need another $500,000. Right. I like you love it. Like you yeah. can't wait to do it again. <laughs> yeah. But no, I can't, I'm, I'm really excited about you know, I'm going to be producing a, a film real soon. So I'm, I'm excited about because it's a passion project. You know, if you're going to produce, I say, you know what, you better love what you're doing. You got to, you got to be passionate about it because if you're just doing it just to, for the money, it's a tough job, you know, um, producing for the money. Yeah. You work for years making nothing and you get a, uh, unless you're working for a production company, but that's, there's a producer that owns that production company that that's actually getting paid, you know, Mm -hmm. or, or you know they're paying you a a, a salary but th that's different than what you're talking about which is you work your ass on some uh, off for for a project uh for years before someone says action and you get your right. producer fee finally yeah but nobody sees and and producing really made me appreciate the days of hi patrick you know here's your script there's your trailer We'll come get you when we need you, you know? Yeah. Would you like some coffee? You're like, you know, it, it really makes you, uh, and from the actor's perspective, and I remember this, it's like, wow, that guy's the producer. Uh -huh. You know, he's, he's rich. He's must be such a powerful guy. Like he's the producer. He's, and you realize that that, whoever that is, guy, woman or man is, because they're passionate about something, uh, you know, has been pushing this thing up the hill for for sometimes it's ten years. Sure. You know, before uh, it gets to hey, we're all on set and and we're going. And so, but it, it's like like with both of us, if we start early. I don't know how to do anything else. I know mm -hmm. scripts. I know, and like I said, all of it to me is I, something in on the spiritual tip, I think really good scripts that you're passionate about. I think that they choose people. That's how I look at it to bring them in, to bring them to life, you know? And well, so, that. yeah. So there's a, you know, the, we're all fascinated with movies, uh, you know, even if you're not an actor, even if you're not a producer, we're all, 
going to the theater for a reason. And there's a spiritual reason. There's mm -hmm. entertainment, of course, but there's popcorn. And, you know. yeah, we want to feel. We want to laugh. We, we want to cry. Feel. We want to feel something. I mean, that's why yeah. we go into that little black box. We want to forget yeah. and get lost in, you know, in the story. Yeah. Yeah. But we're just, we're just, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're midwives to to uh, an entity that gets created at the end of the day that we get to walk in that black box and see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I listen. I've been giving birth to this my project for fifty seven years. <laughs> you there know? you go, man. There you go. <laughs> you know, it's finally. And, and, and I I know about it, and I'm I'm not going to say anything about it. But congratulations to you because uh, yeah. uh, that's. Uh, hey, hey! I'm going to put this out there. Mark my words. Best picture, best original screenplay, two Oscars, not one, but two. 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 I want to be at that. Absolutely. It won't let me in the Oscars, but I'll be, <laughs> I want the, the, at the reception, the party. I want to be there because I know who you're making this movie with. And, and, yeah, uh, you'll definitely be there. Yep. Hey, so if you could go back, right, and give yourself, the little you, the little Patrick, some life advice, you know, know and knowing what you know now, what would that be? Some advice, you mean, as a young actor? No, yeah, well, as an actor or just some life advice, you know, to, you know, if you could go back to that 18, 19, 20-year-old kid and go, hey, man. Take me, that, that's what I'd say to to earlier me. Take me. Take it easy. Yeah, there's, you know, uh, that guy, and, and I'm, I still have it, is uh, driven, intense, innately. And mm. if things don't go my way, uh, the negativity was severe. And it, if it's, if if the negativity, or, or you know, uh, we're talking about, you know, the business of. You know, at the beginning of this interview, we were talking about what we all share, which is how do you deal with the failure? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it was, you know, like in football, if I dropped a pass, I couldn't like eat. Like I was one of those, that's my brain, you know? So, sure. you know, screw up an audition or or whatever. There's There's a way to go about all of this where you don't, it's not that you care less, it's that, that there's flow and you give yourself some room to fail. And, and you, now I could look back on it and we could talk about failure, uh, uh, not succeeding, you know, uh, in an intelligent, wise place because there's so many years. But when you're fresh out of the gate, uh, you can, my advice was like, hey, you know, give yourself, give yourself some respect for showing up. Cause I did do that, mm -hmm. but I was very, very hard on myself. And, 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 uh, there is in, in, listen, that's why it's great to choose your acting teacher. That's your mentor. Mm -hmm. It's it's not just teaching you the technique of acting, but what, what's great about, uh, you, Billy, is is that you're you're a working actor and you've worked all these years. So you're also dealing with able able to coach young people on how to balance and and not take everything on the chin. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, at that age, like uh, sometimes so severe with myself that I just locked up, you know, and mm -hmm. but. To my credit, now I could look back at that version of Patrick and say, hey, to my credit, guess what? Yeah, all that shit happened, but I kept going, you know, but I would say flow, you know, I, yeah. I, to, to earlier me, keep showing up. It's, it's OK to be intense and, and driven about your stuff, but but don't put uh, unnecessary you know, like we talked about at the beginning of this interview, like the Larry Moss thing, the the height of a rhino and the heart of a rose. Make sure you're open in mm -hmm. failure or success because because that's what we want to see. You know, and you know, you talk about like who was I talking about this with the other day? What a movie star is. You know, there. What's a star? It's visible. It's open. 
It's not about glam or any of that shit. It's a, it's anybody sitting in the seat. It's like, wow, look, they're 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 open and they're okay with being open. And sometimes you can be too hard on yourself, especially while you're learning your craft, where it shuts you down. And so that was my problem back then. That was my mm. my issue that I had to work with. It's a, you know, there's there's a moment where you prepare, 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 and then fuck it. Come what may, you have to get to that place, you know. Well done. Be kind yeah. to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. You, you know. Gotta, you got to be kind to yourself. Yeah. You got to develop. Uh, yeah. What you said. You have yeah. to learn to uh, uh, have self respect and love. You know, like what yeah. you would give to anybody else. You yeah. know. You also have to give to yourself, and yeah. you know, be your I best think, friend, not your worst enemy. There you go. I think, and and everybody who has a thirst for the arts yeah. is is coming from some. It doesn't it doesn't mean that you have to be a fucked up person or a damaged person or you know whatever. It, it doesn't mean that that's necessary, right? Uh, but you're navigating. Um, something you don't understand yet when you're a young artist, you know, and, mm -hmm. and part of maturity is giving yourself some space and, and not being so hard on yourself. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Listen, pa Patrick, I can't thank you enough for coming on the podcast and sharing your wisdom and knowledge with the listeners out there. And right back at you, man. I, I, I'm honored uh, to, to talk to you and uh, you know, we've gotten to know each other quickly and uh, so much of our road is the same, you know, mm -hmm. and in our future roads are, are, are also kind of yeah. intertwined. So what a what a pleasure. And listen, Billy, like a lot of the stuff that we're talking about when you're a young artist and you, you don't know what's up, a great acting coach who's who's, you know, is like a therapist. It's, it's everything you're guiding people, you know. Yeah and into their maturity just in their life and both so it's that's what you're doing and you're giving a great great gift to uh to your uh students so awesome man um, i feel blessed i feel honored to be able to do what i do you know i i thank god every day like i'm truly blessed i found my calling i get to be the guide i get to be that acting teacher that i wish i had i had some great acting teachers don't get me wrong but, you know, I get to be that person now. So it's, it's, it's a gift. I'd love to see you. I'd love to get together. You got to come to the studio. I'm down the street. You, All right, brother. You know, call me. I'm there, man. We'll do so, it soon. Yeah, let's do it soon. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you Thank so you. much, brother. What, what, what a treat today was. I, you know, you don't know, how, you don't know what road you're going to go down in an interview. Yeah. It's actually like, wow we're doing a retrospective on what we've done. And it's like, almost like you have to hear it again now because mm -hmm. it's, you know, you get better at what you're doing, navigating the, the waters, but you have to hear the, uh, the basics, you know, um, all the time. So thank you, man. Thank you, brother. All right, my man, we'll speak soon. <laughs>